to me magic is just an escape of reality. It's a fantasy land. It doesn't have limits. It's just gorgeous and fantastic and da magical. To me, drag means extra. Being extra because there's so much ugliness in the world and so much boredom. And drag is a way to break that open and create something beautiful. Drag to me means the world. You know, I was a little shy gay boy who saw my first drag show and discovered magic. I think drag literally has now become everything, you know. Um, I'm from the theatre, I've got a theatre background, and for me, drag has taken my kind of love of theatre and spun it into this kind of weird and wonderful world. What drag means to me is having the ability to reflect my most exuberant and authentic self in hair, makeup, and fashion. And uh, yeah, I just always feel like a superhero when I'm in drag, and I love feeling empowered like that. Drag means back pain and premature aging. Well, drag means that you get to be whoever you want to be, turn the party, and just be a tit in the wig, really. Drag to me is freedom to express myself through my art, through my face, through what I'm wearing and what I'm saying. Drag is everything to me. Well, drag to me just means it's the ability to live your life out loud and to live your truth, but also it allows your soul to dance in color. Drag means a larger than life expression of what I can't be normally. Liberty, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, drag is um, creating art and work legitimately. Well, drag to me means freedom. Freedom to be me. I was born fabulous. And so as I've grown older, I get to be exactly who I was born to be. I've always been a fan of drag, but honestly, it makes her happy. Drag means to me freedom, freedom of gender, freedom of, freedom of expression, being able to be yourself, your true self. Like RuPaul says, we're all born naked and the rest is drag, and I, I'm a firm believer in that. Drag to me means self-expression, and oh, you know what, it means everything. Drag has what taught me how to be the person I am today. Uh, I found drag when I was 18 and didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, and it really is literally everything. Drag to me means uh, freedom. It gives you the ability to do anything and everything. You can do politics or religion or you can just be an absolute slag on stage. You can literally do whatever you want. Drag means to me everything that as a young boy I think I saw things you know on TV like whether it be makeup, whether it be costumes, I think everything that I kind of wanted to do but didn't know that I wanted to do. Growing up and kind of finding the art of makeup and costuming, I, I knew that I wanted to get into makeup, but I didn't know why. Then it wasn't until I got into makeup that I thought, right, that's why I wanted to get into makeup because I can do it on myself. So um, being able to express all of these different art forms within one art form, you know, costuming, lip syncing, singing, um, acting, characters, illusions, stuff like that. Every one of those different art forms kind of fit into this one thing called drag. When I started drag, it was more about performing, having fun, uh, being fabulous, being unapologetic. And I would have to say that being unapologetic has stayed true to me since then. Uh, nowadays, what I've grown and progressed to be, not only as a performer, but as a human being, and just basically becoming an activist, it's, it's now power to me. It is a platform where I know people are listening. For a long time, and to this day, it's still therapy. Drag means so much to me. I think it's just helped me explore my own identity. I think it's definitely given me a freer understanding of people around me, myself, what my gender identity is, and kind of being able to be who I am without more of a fear of judgment more than anything. Expression. Um, freedom, it means having fun, means being camp, it means enjoying yourself, it means inspiring other people, being inspired, it means art. It's, I think drag just has so many facets, it's just wonderful, like it can be anything to anyone. My favourite thing about doing drag is being in drag, my least favourite thing is getting into drag. <laughs>
Um, well, I'm I'm skinny and I'm gay and it's never been more lucrative, so. Another thing about getting into drag, see, when I first started, I used to tape with gaffer tape, um, because I thought that made me a queen. But since I've been being paid for it, I don't bother. I just like pull my tights up and hope for the best and it always falls out and that's the hardest thing. That's 100% tea. You're welcome. Um, I'm fat, I'm ginger and uh, I'm in drag. So that's basically a bog off deal. So you got three in one, so you might as well get your kinks. <laughs> There's a battle between Vivian and James, which is your stage persona and your live persona, which is always a, a huge battle as well, because for years and years and years, when I started drag, I wouldn't even go out on a night out as James. It was always be, oh, well, give me give me three hours and I'll be there. And you turn up as Vivian, because you kind of get the whole, um, you know, the attention, the, the admiration from people in a nightclub. If I'm stood in full drag, then you know you're gonna get, oh my God, let's have a photo, blah, blah, blah. So you've, you've really got to find that balance between your home life and your drag. My greatest challenge so far would definitely have to be just getting the confidence to go out as Delatrix. Um, I think the first time I ever went out <laughs> as Delatrix, I made the taxi man pull right outside the door. I was so scared. I was like, everyone's gonna look at me. Um, but yeah, I think that was my biggest challenge is telling Tom to fucking go out and do it. Um, be Delatrix, be fearless, be in Delatrix, and just be authentic. I get to do what I love, and I get to love what I do, day in, day out, at this current moment in time. That comes with uh, an obscene fear of job security. Um, that also comes with a lot of hope, and a lot of, you end up praying on the way to some shows that you've not worked before, you pray that the promoters, that the staff, that the audience members are gonna give you the respect. And I think what people don't understand with drag is we are your entertainers, we are here to give you a good time. We're not your enemy, we're not your personal plaything, and we're also human beings. And all that we ask for is respect. The fact that Drag Race has come along and, you know, changed both of our lives for the better. Because when we were living in Grand Canary, we were literally always together because we worked in the same place. And then coming home, it was like, I had to go to work separately and mm. then you was at home. And then when you did gigs, yeah, I was like, I'd have home. to go away at the weekends. And when and... you did Drag Con New York and stuff, you had to go away. And then like, mm. just when you did gigs, I was like, obviously separate from you. It was just hard. Yeah, so it was hard. So it was nice that, you know, post Drag Race, we were able to go, right, so, you, you know, if there's a gig that they know that David's included, David works for me, David does the merch, David, you know, does all the packing and everything like that. So he's able to come with me, share the experience, and it's just the best thing that could have happened, really. I feel that with drag, like, from the first time putting on a wig to now, and, like, understanding and working around it, it's like, there's always, for me, it's like trying to mix business with pleasure. Um, working with friends, working with, with like a real job in the daytime, um, also trying to keep on top of social media, keeping a presence. Um, it's just some, it's like always just trying to find like headspace and clarity. And I feel I'm working on it and it's great, but it's there, there are moments. The crazy thing is about drag is that I never wanted to do it. I never wanted to do it. Rewind to November 2012 at the University of Brighton where I was studying performance art in the town of veganism. And I was a first year student looking into the art of mime and just created this performance piece about being a mime and it was all to a lip sync track of, you know, when a mime is trapped in a box and does that thing. I just threw the question out there, what if the mime got out of the box? How would the mime take on the world? And that was the entire lip sync performance. And at the end of that performance, this uh, fellow performer, a uh, friend of mine, pulled me aside and went, you need to do drag. 
you need to do drag. And this fella, the former friend of mine, ended up being my drag sister in the very first troupe that sort of launched us, the three of us, into our drag careers. I first started doing drag um, when, well, it kind of just fell naturally into it because I was literally all that, always that person at college, at school, that when you have a Halloween party, I'd be the first one to dress up. Um, I won't call it makeup, but it's something definitely on my face. Um, and it's usually a wig. It was like Cruella de Vil. It was like, I went as Rita Ora one, one year. I was like, I had a little bandana and a denim jacket and I was like, red lip. I was like, I'm so cool. Um, and then I was just there, like went to uni, was always a typical Leo in the fact that I would always be at the front of the crowd, find the highest point in the club and dancing upon it. And then so, <laughs> I was like, and then back in Bournemouth, like this Thursdays came about and I was like, you could win 50 quid and a free drink. And I was there, like, I can do that. <laughs> and I was like, I can pay for my night out on Saturday if I win this Thursday. So at the local queer space in Bournemouth at Does Your Mother Know, um, they do a lip sync competition where you go down, get dressed up, do whatever you like. Um, it's kind of like karaoke, but you literally just lay the house down. Um, so I kept on doing it as much as I could. Eventually I won one, I supported Evie Oddly from Drag Race. And then ever since then, I have been a paid drag queen, a resident at Does Your Mother Know? Um, alongside Rougie, Crystal Lubricant, Charmaine, like it's all fab and they're all such camp people. I think people can get on a TV show and believe this fantasy that we're all suddenly superstars and celebrities. I kind of try and look at it as if I'm still doing the same thing as I was doing 12 years ago when I started drag. I got into drag to be an entertainer, to go in nightclubs and give people a good night. I never became a drag queen to become a celebrity. There is a lot that comes with drag that is so rewarding. And one of the biggest rewards that I bloody love is encouraging someone to do it or encouraging people to wake up to know that drag isn't just a cis male in a wig and seeing ah oh, seeing the fucking look on a woman's face that is in a beat face and that 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 there's this like cog in their head like twirling and it's like they've just clicked and realized i can fucking do this and whether it's whether it is a woman or whether it is another cis male or a trans performer or just anyone whether it's you realizing that anything is drag like i I do, I am drag. Beyonce is drag. Lady Gaga is drag. I recently started performing more in London and it's just great performing on bigger and bigger stages. Like last year I entered Lip Sync 1000, which is a great competition in London done by The Glory. Um, and then through that I got to the final and I was performing on the big massive stage at the Grand. And that is just, it was, so weird it's like having your pop star moment <laughs> like every boy or little queen has when looking themselves in the mirror and then just seeing this auditorium full of people was just amazing you're putting on a character if you're telling me that you don't go to work at that minute before you step through that door you're having a little bit of like a like you've got to put something on what is it it's drag and it's just so rewarding to have people realize that my favourite thing about drag is putting on a fucking show. I love making people feel great. I love the smiles. I love people coming up to me after the show, saying how great they felt watching me. And like, just making people feel lush. One of my biggest inspirations in life, not only in drag is Madonna, and one of her songs, Human Nature, she says it, and it's stuck by me ever since I heard it. Uh, which is express yourself, don't repress yourself. That's what drag is for me, it's a form of expression. It can be anything you want it to be. I think drag race has definitely changed the face of drag culture. I think it's brought a fresher, more kind of underground punk kind of vibe. Um, there's so many different types of queens on season one and it was lush to see. Um, there could be a little bit more diversity going on. Um, it'll be nice to see some AFAB queens, people of colour, drag kings. There's so many different types of drag. And I think just getting that validation to all those types of artists would be absolutely incredible. A lot of my inspiration comes from 
being yourself really. So I started off always that person. I was always the bigger gay. Um, I was never fit into stereotypes of being like the skinny twink. Never had a bleach blonde hair. Um, so never fitted in in that way as such. And so that's why I feel that my drag is just more of an extension with me. It's why I always have red hair. Um, it always, so it's just the extension of my actual hair. What I look forward to seeing, I look forward to seeing more people speaking up. I look forward to seeing more justice for the King community, the uh, AFAB community, and for one day just to call it the community and to not have a group of people that are pushed out or mocked or be seen as the butt of the joke or the token of the lineup. It would be nice to live in a world where it was the community. I want to be like body positivity, there's people like Tess Holiday and people online and then like literally in the last year I found my icon and goddess which is Lizzo, um, repping her merch. Uh, then she was there like she was performing like she's up on that stage she's singing live she's giving you a full show like and she does that day in day out i think she's just an inspiration to a lot of people a people of color people of size she's a queen for the gays for the queers she's there for everything with drag race you suddenly became cool it was drag queens with celebrities of the nightlife scene I'm not saying that people just want to be your friends now because of drag race i think everyone kind of saw drag for an art form, something that is actually something that is to be admired and getting on Drag Race makes you just very, very lucky to make us better than any other drag queen that's working their bollocks off on the drag scene. The people that I have communicated with and shared stories with and helped empower, I am so fucking lucky to do what I do and I do not take a second of it for granted. I treat every gig like it's the last one, and I will forever live unapologetically doing so. Get ready for a deep dive.